Assume A and B are events. If the probability of A union B is 0 0.7, the probability of A is 0 0.3, and the probability of B is 0 0.65, find the probability of A intersect B. Here you need the union rule for probability. which says the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. And above, they have given you three of those four. They told you the probability of A union B is 0 0.7, that the probability of A is 0 0.3, probability B is 0 0.65, so your task is to figure out the fourth term, which is the probability of A intersect B. Start by adding those two numbers together, 0 0.95. Now the term you're attempting to solve for is negative on the right, so it might make sense to move it over and let the 0.7 move over to the right. So that would give you the probability of A intersect B equals 0 0.95 minus 0 0.7, which is 0 0.25. So the probability of A intersect B by the union rule for probability is 0 0.25. Let's do another. The windshield wipers on a car have not been working properly. The probability that the car needs a new motor is 0 0.55, that it needs a new switch is 0 0.45, and the probability that the car needs both is 0 0.15. What is the probability that the car needs neither a new motor nor a new switch? I would prefer doing this with a Venn diagram, so that is what I will be doing here. There are two things going on. The possibility of needing a new switch, I will use this circle for that and label it S, or a new motor. I'll use M for that. The probability that it needs both is 0 0.015. So the point zero one five goes in the overlap because that's the probability that it needs both. It tells me that the probability that I need a new motor is 0.55, but I've already counted for 0.15 in there, so I have to subtract to get the rest. And that gives me 0 0.40, or just 0 0.4, however you want to write that. And that's the probability that it needs a new motor. So that would go here. Notice that 0 0.40 and 0 0.15 gives me the 0.55 back. But I also knew that the, know that the probability that it needs a new switch is 0.45. So if I take 0.45 and subtract off the 0.15 that I've already counted inside that circle, I end up with 0 0.30. So that's the switch. So that would go here. Also keep in mind that the probability of everything, in other words, everything within the uh, universal, universal set, which is the rectangle, has to add up to 1. So if you add up those three numbers, you would get 0.15405. You'd get 0.85. So that means if you subtract from one, there's a probability of 0.15 that it needs neither. That 0.15 is what's it's not in the need of switch circle, and it's not in the need of motor circle. And that's the probability they're asking about. They're asking for the probability the car needs neither. So the probability 
that the car needs neither one, neither a new switch nor a new motor, is the probability that's outside of both those circles, which is 0.15. Okay, let's do another. A college did a study of 205 randomly selected students to find a relationship between satisfaction with advising and academic success. They obtained this info. Of the 62 students on academic probation, 22 are not satisfied with their advising. But only 25 of the students not on academic probation are dissatisfied with their advising. What is the probability that a randomly selected student is on academic probation and is satisfied with advising? The hardest part of this is simply um, translating those words into the things you need to, to complete your Venn diagram. This is obviously a Venn diagram type problem. There are two circles involved because they're talking about students on academic probation and students that are satisfied or not satisfied with their advising. So uh, uh, 62 students on academic probation, 22 are not satisfied. So you've got, you've got two things going on. It's the probation and the satisfaction. So I will take one circle and I guess I'll call it S for satisfaction. These are the people that are satisfied with their advising. And the other circle are the people who are on academic probation, so I'll call that P. So P, S are the satisfied folks. They're satisfied with their advising. And the P folks are on academic promotion, on academic probation. Okay, once we've got that set up, we've got to, to fill out the, the diagram now. The first thing I notice, it says there are 62 students on academic probation. Of the 62 students on academic probation. So inside of that P circle, there are 62. The entire circle P. But continuing to read, of those 62 students in the P circle, 22 are not satisfied. So within the P circle of 62 students, 22 of those are outside of the satisfied circle. So they're inside the probation circle, but outside of the satisfied circle. So that means that those 22 students are right here. They are inside the probation circle because it's part of the 62 that were on academic probation, so they're inside the probation circle. But they're not satisfied, so they can't be inside the satisfied circle. But now that I know that there were 62 people inside the probation circle and that 22 of them are to the right, that means that 40 of them have to be in there because it said that there are 62 students in the P circle. 62 in the P circle. Okay, but only 25 of those students, but only 25 of the students not on academic probation are dissatisfied with their advising. So 25 are not in the P circle, and they're, since they're dissatisfied, dissatisfied, they're also not in the satisfied circle. So they're outside the the P circle, and they're outside of the S circle. So those 25 students must be there. Okay, there are 205 students in the entire um, selection, so I can account for the uh, rest of these by subtraction. If I take the if I take the 40 and the 22 and the 25, I get 87. So by subtraction, if there were 205 students to begin with. 
and 87 are already accounted for. For that means 118 students are unaccounted for, so they must go over in here. And now that I've got my Venn diagram completed, I should be able to answer the question pretty easily. And the question was, what's the probability that a student is on probation and satisfied with advising? So I'm looking for the probability that the student is on probation and satisfied with the advising. Well, the people that are on probation and satisfied are those 40 students. So the probability is 40 out of 205. And I didn't write this in the beginning, but this problem asked for the answer to be written as a decimal to two decimal places. And if you take your calculator and do that, you'll find it 0 0.20. So there's a 0 0.20 probability that a student in this, from this um, selection of students is on probation and satisfied with his or her advising.